Hey, and welcome to the first in the lecture series of weightlifting programming mistakes. So this is a lecture series designed to look at some of the common issues, misconceptions that I see as a weightlifting coach, a tutor, and an educator, um, just so that we can correct them. So if you are an athlete uh, that's looking to improve your Olympic weightlifting, uh, maybe if you're a coach that's looking to integrate some Olympic weightlifting movements into your programming or to um, take athletes to a slightly higher level using these movements, this should be a useful lecture series for you to write better, more effective programs that get your athletes where you want them to go. So let's jump right into it. And what we're going to start with in lecture one is the, like, the biggest, the most common issue that I see, and that is not enough frequency. So what do we mean by frequency? Well, it means the amount of times that you train per week. So in weightlifting specifically, this means the amount of times that you train the snatch, the clean and jerk, and their close variations. Why is frequency important? Well, skill acquisition literature is very clear. Practicing skills more often improves learning speed and increases technical mastery. So in weightlifting, if you don't practice the movements often enough, you won't have the technical skill to perform at your best. There are also really specific speed strength and positional strength characteristics that can only be trained with the weightlifting movements themselves. I've put here that you can't just get good by doing back extensions. If you want to get good at weightlifting, at the snatch and the clean and the jerk, you have to regularly practice the snatch and the clean and the jerk. There's no amount of assistance work that's going to get you to the highest level possible. So that's something to really bear in mind with your programming. It has to underpin everything that we do. How little is too little when it comes to weightlifting frequency? Well, programs in which you snatch less than twice per week or clean and jerk less than twice per week are likely not going to help you get to your best performance. So they're not going to be providing enough frequency. Um, so this two times per week, I would say it includes the main lifts and close variations. Emphasis on close. So exercises like hang snatches, maybe hang snatches from the knee or, you know, low hang cleans from the shin, uh, they would probably count because they're very specific. They're very close to the normal movement, to the full movement. Uh, but probably I wouldn't include things like drop snatches or like loose sort of exercises that are close-ish, but that only train part of the movement. So you need to keep that in mind. Um, in other words, another way to think of this is that at least twice per week, you need to be performing lifts that are as close as possible and that look as close as possible to the snatch, the clean and the jerk practical recommendations, okay? So with this first mistake in mind, what would we actually do? Well, you need to aim to perform weightlifting movements frequently. So in your programs, you want to have your athletes performing weightlifting movements a lot. Typically, I have my athletes perform them around three to four times per week, which might look like, so a little example here, I've got Monday, snatch, hang clean and jerk. Wednesday, hang snatch, clean and jerk. Friday, power snatch, power clean. This is a slightly lighter day. And then on Saturday, we might go heavier on something like the snatch and the clean and jerk. So you've got all of this going on. And this is alongside strength work and assistance exercises. It's also a new rough example to demonstrate the concept. Okay, I don't want you looking at this and saying, well, look, Alex over at Character Strength says, this is exactly what you've got to do. This is the program. It's not, this is just one example to demonstrate the concept of frequency, okay? So the weightlifting movements and close variations are getting practiced multiple times per week. So that gives you an idea of what frequency should look like in an effective weightlifting program. Next up, in weightlifting, programming mistakes number two, we're going to be looking at not enough strength work. So that's it for today. Tune in next week and we're going to be looking at the second mistake. Uh, I hope that was useful and I'll see you in the next one.